All right, what do we have for our reward? Oh, it's the Adept Summoner this week. <laughs> now, this is epic. You will dream of me. I will never leave. Last weekend was a beatdown at 600 rounds per minute. I genuinely don't think it was a coincidence that I got sick right after that weekend. The death knell of your trials night was probably going to be some clown titan loading in with conditional and an adept summoner, and since it was already an adept drop on the first weekend you could get it, you already knew he was just doing a lap on the 14 people still suffering through the trials playlist and giving us hopeless saps the smackdown one last time. The ringing of the summoner chambering and firing a blistering 600 rounds per minute is going to be ringing in my ears and haunting my dreams for weeks. Why? Well, because it's a good gun, and the traits just got a lot better too. The sandbox has changed a lot with update 7.3.5 dropping last week, and it seems to me that adaptive auto rifles are positioned pretty well now. It's also the fourth, not the second, not even the third time, but the fourth time we've had the summoner introduced into the sandbox with a new trait pool. I mean, I mean seriously, at this point we have enough versions of the summoner to fully arm Grievous. Epic. And this time, it's juiced up on a bunch of really good traits. It's like the summoner got angry it hasn't been meta since Season of the Worthy all the way back in 2020, and now the fourth edition is just out of vengeful roid range. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were some nice rolls before, and just to prove that, I used my Witch Queen roll to go flawless this last weekend. The fourth edition summoner has S-tier traits in almost every slot in both columns. And keep this in mind as we move through here as well. Into the Light drops in just a couple weeks, and a bunch of random drop weapons are going to be able to gain enhanced traits. Prophecy weapons, Guardian Games weapons and the latest batch of trials weapons as well including the summoner so not only is summoner a solid weapon out of the box right now not only can you get adepts and crank those stats up a little bit more but you're gonna be able to enhance it on top of that which for some traits is pretty awesome now i'm also not gonna lie many enhanced traits are also completely pointless so don't miss what i'm saying here if you have even a two out of five roll on summoner you can put people to shame with it it can be adept it can be a regular drop that's a two out of five as long as the main traits are good you can cook with the summoner the rest of the stats are bonus. Definitely a nice bonus for sure, but don't feel like you're left out if you didn't get an adept. And speaking of adept weapons, if you're looking for an adept and it's just really difficult for you to go flawless, feel free to subscribe to the channel, stop by the discord. It's a small group of people over there, but we have a number of very friendly, very skilled players who might be happy to help. So check that out, link in the description. So what exactly about the summoner is going to be keeping you up at night? Every weapon at the end of the day really just boils down to what's in these two columns right here. And that's why the summoner is so great. It does not miss. Every slot has has a good trait it kind of just depends on if you want it for pve or pvp for the first column you've got heal clip elemental capacitor zen moment subsistence dynamic sway reduction perpetual motion and overflow for the second column we've got incandescent target lock tap the trigger Kill Clip, Onslaught, Rampage, and Golden Tricorn. Some of these traits work really well, and I'm guessing are kind of jumping off the page to you. Summoner has really good traits for both PvE and PvP. Subsistence and Incandescent is all time in PvE. You're going to be repeatedly exploding and scorching targets, going to be refilling the mag, and it's really fun in almost every setting except for maybe GMs where every thrall is built like John Cena. And of course, as we'll be able to enhance those two traits, it'll only get better. More Scorch, more Mag Refill. Enhanced Subsistence actually brings the auto will refill from 17 to 23 percent which is actually a pretty good improvement you also have subsistence and onslaught for faster rate of fire per kill is it the most efficient perk probably not i mean you're just kind of tearing through your magazine but it sure is fun and don't miss on heal clip plus kill clip either heal clip just got a chunky buff in pve that grants cure times two to yourself and cure times one to nearby allies topping off your health and getting extra damage for every kill and reload would be quite nice as long as you're not getting one tap by the most annoying mini boss in the game topping off your health and getting extra damage for every Every kill and reload is gonna be really helpful as long as you're not getting one tapped by the most annoying mini boss in the game thanks taken meatball now why do i even bother bringing up the summoner for pve when there are great weapons like callus mini tool or abyss defiant which is also an auto rifle and it's craftable and offers some of the great trait combinations well personally i'd love if all the pve mains flooded trials so i can just crush 
because it's variety, it's something new, and the summoner is relatively accessible. Abyss Defiant comes from a raid. That's not always a super accessible option for people who don't have enough friends to raid, or don't want to talk, or absolutely despise LFG. Trust me, I've been option three for nine years at this point, and it stinks. At this point, I've done enough LFG raids that I can tell you within the first two minutes whether or not the group I just joined is going to be quick, or if I'm in for a three hour session of pain. So why not just use Callus Mini Tool? Well, that's not super accessible either. A bunch of us have it crafted already, but if you don't, I think the only way you can get it is by running Presage, but that's going to take a few tries to get enough red borders, and that's if you own the right season or expansion to even play Presage. Yay! Confusing monetizing scheme. Also, in terms of the weapon itself, Summoner has a little more range and flexibility compared to a weapon like Callus Mini Tool, or if you want to be more of a support teammate with traits like Heal Clip, you can do that too. And in terms of this season, which is really long, we still have until June, Solar is absolutely cracked in the artifact as well. It's going to be really good for Onslaught coming with Into the Light. Multiple mods there just crank Solar 3.0 and make overall damage damage and ad clear ridiculous. So the summoner is definitely worth a shot. So now we've talked about summoner for PvE. I'm guessing you've already kind of put the pieces together about what perks are going to work in PvP and why this auto rifle is such a menace. First off, it gets the base stats right. Summoner comes in at a 0.8 second time to kill, which is solid, pretty good to go out of the box. You got slower weapons like 120 hand cannons at one full second. Then on the low end, you got weapons like Drang at 0.6 seconds. So we're definitely in the realm of competitive, kind of right in the middle there. After that, you've got range coming in at 25 meters before damage fall off. Of course, that is without any modifications at all, and if you just add a couple decent mag perks like ricochet rounds and small bore, you could comfortably bump that up to 27.6 meters right out of the gate. You could still increase it with a masterwork or more aggressive barrel options like full bore, although I'm not sure I really recommend that. Now, interestingly enough, a number of other comparable adaptive autos ship with higher or slightly higher range at base. Gnawing Hunger actually sits at a base range of 48 compared to Summoner's 40, although I'm not really sure that's game changing. Kind of funny thing is, in my opinion, handling is really important to sweaty players high-end PvP, and I feel like if you took the names off this chart and had me guess which weapon was a Trials weapon just based on the stats, I think I'd get it right just based off the fact that Summoner ships with a 70 base handling, which is quite a bit more than typical. Adaptives are usually a little bit more clunky than that. Now you may not think that's a big deal, but having high handling at base is really helpful because it just lets you spec into other stats like range and stability without really losing overall performance. I've never been really big on prioritizing handling, but it is pretty difficult to want to use a weapon in the Crucible that's got good traits going for it, but handles worse than a boat on ice. Now you could of course also opt for arrowhead break in the first column to land a really crisp 87 recoil direction and have even higher handling, although I don't think that's super necessary. The base recoil is pretty manageable. Now one last thing I want to point out that the summoner has going for it that other autos don't necessarily is a much higher airborne effectiveness stat. AE is for elitists though, so who cares anyway, right? I don't necessarily agree, but not for the reason you might think. I'm an idiot. And the amount of times I'm just trying to get out of somewhere and I jump really high because I'm a hunter and, you know, I'm just stuck in the air is, well, that happens a lot. Personally, I hate fighting from the air. I just think it drops my chances of winning that duel drastically. And even as a hunter, I feel like I just have no shot. I'm no good at it. I mean, for example, I was using Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves the other week with Drang, had an AE stat of like 87, and I was still getting crushed. But Summoner feels much better from the air. And if I had to guess, that baseline stat of 24 doesn't hurt too much. I don't go out of my way to fight from the air, but it's nice when you're just trying to escape and return fire or clean up a kill while staying out of shotgun range. And the higher base AE is worth noting for those of you who actually like to lean into that stat and fight from the air. Icarus Grip easily gets it up to 38, and Bungie also outlined future plans to spec into AE with armor mods as well. So definitely something to keep in mind for the future for all you annoying Heat Rises warlocks. And real quick, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more Destiny videos. We're pushing for 10,000 subscribers by the final shape. So I finished up recording, sat down, was gonna start editing, and thought I said everything I wanted to about the summoner and then I realized I left off one of the biggest upsides to the summoner, and that's the origin traits. Before we even get into the rest of the traits for summoner, I just wanted to point out how ridiculous wildcard is in PvP. Wildcard's origin trait states that final blows have a chance to create experimental submunitions at the target's location, which is basically just the little Telesto bolts. Now, most weapons' origin traits aren't really that big of a deal, it's just a small bonus here and there, and wildcard on paper isn't a lot different, but situationally, it can be very effective. Damage per bolt is around 4 and they last around 10 seconds. So when you kill an enemy, it kind of provides a little bit of a trap, and then that little damage tick when they run over it is going to reset their revive timer when the enemy attempts to revive. And if you're there to push on them too, you can clean up the kill a little bit easier as well. So it's not game breaking, but considering how much upside this auto rifle already has, wildcard just adds another layer of power. Also, don't sleep on alacrity either. If your teammates are getting farmed, you can take advantage of alacrity for a ton of stat boosts that are really handy. And if you're on your own, you're going to have a 
little bit better of a chance of winning those duels. Alacrity also works if you're just running solo as well, whether that's in Rumble or doing PvE activities. Works there too. By now, pretty common knowledge, but definitely worth just getting a little reminder out there. Trials weapons are usually pretty good in PvP, but they are significantly better in Rumble. It's ridiculous. All right, back to the main cut. So the base stats for the summoner are solid. Not amazing, but they're pretty good. And of course, if you land an adept roll, you can use adept mods. The masterwork gives you a little bit more for every stat. It's it's a nice buff. But more importantly, the summoner gets the traits right. And not only does it have good traits, but they're in the right columns. It, it provides good combinations. You got stat boosting traits like perpetual motion and elemental capacitor, or opportunity perks like kill clip and onslaught, even golden tricorn. What I particularly enjoy about the summoner is that you get to customize it the way that you like to use it. If you prioritize ease of use, you've got perpetual motion and tap the trigger. That's going to crank up your stats up front, going to give you some extra accuracy. Or if you want to just maximize the potential in the neutral space, you've got Zen Moment for instant stability as soon as you deal damage, and then add on target lock for some extra forgiveness so you can afford to miss a headshot or two, or even kill a little faster on low resilience guardians. And just remember one thing with target lock, don't scrap it as soon as you see it. It did get nerfed last update, but only on SMGs. Target lock was nerfed only for SMGs to address guns like the Immortal and whatever that stupid crucible stasis SMG is that shreds me all the time. But target lock can absolutely be a viable option on the summoner, especially in today's sandbox of decreased forgiveness. Now, personally, my best adept from this last weekend was perpetual motion and tap the trigger. The masterwork kind of stinks, but I did get high caliber rounds on it too. So it offers really high stability and upfront ease of use. And with the summoner, I feel like it always takes me a couple shots to really get on target, and this role helps me a lot. Not to mention with high caliber rounds, I've got a great shooting experience on my end, I've got a little more range, and I'm also dealing extra flinch to my opponent, which I feel like definitely makes a difference at times. For a weapon like the summoner that can't peek shoot, but you gotta stay on target, flinch is really handy. I know it's skilled depending on the weapon and how much damage you're dealing per shot, but it definitely felt like there were times I started landing my shot and my opponent's aim just completely fell off. You know, those kind of duels where I start returning fire when I'm already in critical health and somehow I win. Did high caliber win that duel for me? Maybe. I don't really have a good way of knowing, but it didn't hurt. It's not a make or break trait, but I think sometimes high cal is just enough to make the difference. And if you struggle to land those kills initially, I think high caliber rounds is a great option alongside some stat boosting perks to make your job a little bit easier. Each weapon in Destiny does feel a little bit different and a lot of hunting for the best god roll for you just comes down to knowing the kind of player that you are. You should always be trying to get the most out of your traits. Do you accept more risk in the trait columns or do you need perks that are going to assist you and give you the best chance to win your duel right now? And at the end of the day, it's not about landing the streamer god roll. It's about what works for you. So if you want to do a Zen moment and tap the trigger, then that's a great weapon. Now that said, Summoner is great with neutral game traits like perpetual motion and target lock, but where this thing, but where Summoner gets kind of ridiculous are the more aggressive traits like kill clip and onslaught. Kill clip is going to grant you 25% more damage after a kill and reload, which is a really nice chunk of damage. It's going to raise your crit value from roughly 27 to 33 damage per crime. Stupid autocorrect. Crit, not crime. Typically, a summoner is going to take 9 shots to kill for a 0.8 second time to kill, and if you're up against tier 10 resilience guardians, it's going to require all 9 crits. Now, with the kill clip active, you're dealing enough damage to kill a 10 resilience guardian in only 7 shots. That's going to be a very crisp 0.6 second time to kill. Pair that with perpetual motion so you can chain kills quickly with faster reload and snapper handling. Improve stability? That's pretty nice, man. And not just in 6v6 either. And look, I understand a lot of people are going to tell you that kill activated perks aren't as good in 3v3 and game modes like comp and trials because there just aren't as many people. I've even said that myself in the past. But you know what? I changed my mind. There is absolutely a ton of value in neutral game perks that help you land that first kill. We just discussed how you should aim for the god roll that you're most comfortable with. And there is some validity that kill activated perks aren't necessarily as valuable in 3v3. But listen, if you're a good enough player to snag a kill in 3v3 modes and take advantage of the damage buffs, do not shy away from that. Because in 3v3, teammates, if they're smart, are usually going to be stacked pretty close together. So your chances of actually making use of a kill activated perk that only lasts for a short time, like Onslaught or Kill Clip, those chances are pretty good. Can you go on a seventh column? No, obviously not, but it's still going to serve you pretty well. Now, there is certainly some danger with perks like that because it encourages you to ape your opponent and engage prematurely when you have extra damage active, but you also, you know, have like no health left. But that said, the amount of times it's also saved my life by speeding up my kill time and finishing off a second opponent that collapses on me is pretty high. Kill activated perks are absolutely higher risk, higher reward, but there are many scenarios where you're going to survive subsequent engagements that you just wouldn't have without a trait like
like Onslaught or Kill Clip on the summoner. Even Golden Tricorn. I'm a big fan of that one because it doesn't require a reload. You get your kill, you got the damage right away. It's kind of like a shortcut to Rampage one and a half. It grants a 15% damage buff without a reload and lasts for seven seconds. And that's good enough for a 0.7 second kill, or at least it'll give you some forgiveness too. If you get Golden Tricorn, don't sleep on that either. It's a balanced but really solid perk with better uptime than most damage perks. Although I will say you might as well forget the tier two damage for most subclasses. I want to just talk about Onslaught real quick. Onslaught procs like Rampage. You get a kill and it's active, except Onslaught will progressively speed up your rate of fire up to three stacks, maxing summoner out at I believe around 950 rounds per minute. Now, even just one stack lowers your time to kill to a respectable 0.67 time to kill. That's pretty fast. That's good. Here's my problem though. Kind of two actually. They go hand in hand. Duration and ammo. Onslaught is only active for four and a half seconds, which is kind of on the short end for damage buffs. It may not sound a lot worse than six or seven seconds, but it can be tough to make use of it. Not only that, you just spent anywhere between probably 25 and 40% of the magazine getting that first kill. And now you've got a gun that's dumping its mag even faster, and admittedly, it can be a little unwieldy. You do get a reload buff for having Onslaught, which is great, and definitely helps you get back into the fight a little bit quicker, but 4.5 seconds is just so short anyways that it's kind of hard to fit in a reload and find another target. Onslaught is really fun, don't get me wrong. From my experience, it can just be a little bit difficult to actually make use of, practically speaking. If you enjoy it though, absolutely go for it. I just wanted to lay out my reasons for why it may not be the best pick necessary necessarily, even if I think it's one of the most fun PvP perks when it gets rolling. Surprising your enemies with a fire hose bullet spray is such a good time. Now speaking of a great time, why don't you check out this fun PvP build I made a little while ago that lets you impersonate titans as a hunter. Thanks for watching, good luck grabbing a summoner this weekend, best of luck to you when it's back in the adept rotation again, and I'll catch you Saturday night on Twitch. See ya!